Hi, hello, lovely greetings to all dear students. My name is Nabin Karki and I'll be presenting you the solution of, you know, the first mock test, subject physics, code A. Let's begin with. Now, the first question I have here is from the rotational motion. And let me tell you, the initial questions, the six questions that would be based on single option correct, will also have another variety which is multiple options correct and finally in this paper paper one we also have the numeric based question all right so let's see what is the first question now generally what happens is that you're solving the paper and the first question comes from rotation now it's sufficient enough to shake your confidence but that should not happen now if you are cool calm and patient certainly you will get the edge but let's see what does the question have to say there's a uniform hollow sphere okay that's the object of radius r is spin with an angular speed omega naught about a horizontal diameter so you could see here initially the motion you know has started only with angular velocity during the course of motion will certainly prove it that it will also acquire the linear velocity but to begin with it's only the angular velocity and the surface is rough the coefficient of friction has been given okay that's mu now we need to calculate the distance moved by the sphere before it starts pure rolling that means two concepts have been you know clubbed in this question the first is that we need to find that situation when pure rolling will begin and after that we need to calculate the distance traveled in achieving so. So the first thing I'll begin with is an indicative diagram. So right here let me make a sphere okay so I could manage it all right and let me just continue with the ground so here is that. So everything has been, you know, depicted right here in the figure. Okay. Now, first of all, let's try to understand why does that happen? Why will the sphere start pure rolling? Now, everything has to do with the friction and its roll. Do you realize what is the velocity of the point of contact? You would say, yes, that velocity is in this direction and the value of the velocity is omega multiplied by r because it only has the rotational component but the bottom line is the point of contact that of the sphere has a backward velocity so it means the friction there has to be kinetic first of all and the direction if you see that will be in the forward direction so there goes this is my friction and how much will be the value mu times n and n is mg now did you realize the role of friction because see normal reaction and mg they are neither participating in the translation nor participating in the rotation for obvious reason so we need to concentrate only on mu mg what do you get mu mg produces an acceleration in this direction but together it will also produce an angular acceleration in this direction which is anti-clockwise because the torque due to mu mg about the center that is in the anti-clockwise direction. So what would happen? Because there is an acceleration the sphere will acquire velocity. Because there is an angular acceleration in the opposite direction so omega will decrease. Now do you realize v increases omega decreases so a time will come when v will be equals to omega r and we would say hey that is the state of pure rolling isn't it so right here what do i get is when this object starts pure rolling this is v and the angular velocity omega which is v upon r now the first job is that how do we calculate this value of velocity it's a very regular pattern question of conservation of angular momentum. If I take any point on the ground, the torque due to all the forces about this point is zero, indicating angular momentum about that very point that is conserved. 
and how about the formula for angular momentum you know because there is a combined translation and rotation so the formula for angular momentum is going to be this much cool so now we have made all these strategies so it's time that we start solving it uh, where should I do okay this much of space that's sufficient for me all right so let's see the initial angular momentum r cross p that's going to be zero it's a hollow sphere so the initial angular momentum would be 2 by 3 m r square multiplied by omega naught how about the final if I go for the final that is r cross p c m so that's going to be r m v plus of 2 by 3 m r square multiplied by v upon r does that make sense so this is the initial angular momentum and this is the final angular momentum now you can easily solve this equation that will give you the value of v so this v is known now the question has asked me to calculate the distance I can uh, primarily go with two methods either I can go with work energy theorem that includes distance or let me straightforward go with kinematics now if you see the translational part of the motion going to the translational part the translational acceleration is mu mg divided by m so that's of course mu g so a comes out to be mu multiplied by g and then the translational part the initial speed is zero so the value of speed is going to be under root 2 a s and that is what the question is desiring the distance when it starts pure rolling you do this you're going to get option number c as the correct one i think i can outsource that part the computation part to you isn't it makes sense let's go to the second one okay if you read the question you see that the second question has been put from kinetic theory of gas the pressure of an ideal gas varies with volume as this so this is the expression of the pressure okay so here it is an alpha is constant as expected the pressure at which temperature attains its maximum value in other words we need to search a condition where temperature will be maximum so the first thing that we require is we need to generate an equation where there will be temperature and hey that's never a problem this p can be written something like this as n r t divided by v that is equals to p naught plus of 1 minus alpha v square you get that a little bit of rearrangement n r t that is equals to p naught v plus of 1 minus alpha multiplied by v cube so now just focus on the equation it's the equation of temperature versus volume now to find the condition for maximum temperature that is of course straightforward dt divided by d capital v equals to zero this is the condition condition for what maximum temperature so if i go with this this is going to be nr dt by dv that's equals to p naught plus of 3 1 minus alpha v square so we've just differentiated this equation with respect to volume and yes you need to equate it to zero so guys this gives you the condition okay the condition when temperature is maximum now you need to put this condition right here because the question has asked us to calculate the value of pressure so here is that pressure right so you put this particular condition there you solve it it's an easy computation not much difficulties there so when you do that you're going to get option number b as the correct one now you might be thinking that how did i go with such fast calculation it is not before the recording you know i made a point to solve it so that i can save your time not making you engaged into these calculations all right 
let's go for the third question the third question is from electrostatics and more specifically capacitor what does the question have to say three conducting large plates each of area a are arranged parallel to each other at equal separation which is d plate one two and three are given charges this much so let me first put the charge okay so this guy is given the charge 7q and this is given a charge 3q and this is given a charge 2q okay thereafter the space between the plates 1 and 2 is filled with a dielectric of dielectric constant 2 so that has been given and the plates 1 and 3 are joined by conducting wire so the moment I connect plate 1 and plate 3 so what does it give it gives us the condition that these two plates 1 and 3 are equipotent their potential is equal right and the question says we need to calculate the electrostatic energy stored in the dielectric now the first and foremost thing you need to do is that you need to redistribute the charge you need to start with redistribution the question does not say so you need to do it from your own because do remember this is conductor so the moment you give charge they are distributed so where do we begin from in order to distribute the charge either you can go with the concept of capacitor because you can visualize this and this these two capacitors are in parallel or if you say that no I am interested to go through the basic that's also fine that's also fine so let's see uh, the outermost plate here and here the charge will be total given charge divided by 2 and they are going to have same charge so 7 3 10 plus 2 is 12 by 2 this is 6 Q here this is 6 Q here right now individually plate 1 that is not isolated because plate 1 is connected with plate 3 so we need to go with a little bit of calculation let me say on the left side of plate 2 the charge is Q so on the right that has to be minus Q because conducting property has to be valid and the moment this side has the charge small Q the right side is going to have charge this much because plate 2 stands isolated so its charge would be conserved and here this is going to have 3 capital Q minus of small Q where here okay so this is how we have distributed the charge and you can go with a final cross check you add the total charges of plate 1 and 3 it has to be 9 Q because that has been supplied so let's see let's go for a quick uh, verification this outside is 12 and you could see this Q would get cancelled and minus of 3 Q that's 9 Q now the big job is that how are we going to calculate the value of small Q now to do that let me go through this basic that potential difference of 2 with respect to 1 has to be equal to potential difference of 2 with respect to 3 why because this is common and these two anyway are equipotent that means potential difference how would we define that would be electric field multiplied by the distance because the electric field is uniform here so how much will be the electric field in this space so guys here is that electric field and that electric field is going to be Q divided by epsilon naught A and don't forget the dielectric constant 2 because E by K that will be the electric field multiplied by D and here the electric field is going to be this much and then that is going to give you 3 capital Q minus of small Q divided by epsilon naught A no dielectric and yes the separation is D so this equation is going to give you the value of small Q the moment you get the value of small Q 
Now, if you want to find the energy, either you can go with the concept of energy density and multiply it by the volume, or you can simply say that, hey, I'm going to approach it by the concept of energy stored in the capacitor, which is equivalent, isn't it? So let me just show you through the energy uh, of the capacitor. So the capacitance you can find and that required energy is going to be Q square by 2C. Now how much is the capacitance? Let me not joke because that's K epsilon not A divided by D, right? So you solve this and you're going to get option number A as the correct one.